Now here we have our tracks. We're going to talk more about tracks and understanding how to use the track views and working with tracks. Now here on the track menu, we can see here we have our track. I can select my tracks right here. And as I do, you'll notice that they get highlighted. The name comes up right there, right? It's highlighted where you see the track is. Now also right here I have more I can do. It's show all tracks. I can show only selected tracks. I can even go here with this little button here you saw maybe before and add tracks back into it. See? So the little round little button there, I can take them off. I can slide down and get more of them in. I can slide back up. I can go from here and go back up and get rid of some. See? And I'm back where I started from here with each track. So here I can show or hide. I can hide all tracks. I can hide selected tracks, hide, and sort by track name, sort by voice. Okay. Now it's important you have a track. Let's say you make a new track. Let's go to track menu right here, make a new track. When you make this new track and you pull it up and say, I have a new track, that's going to be my track. Good. Sample's great. I pull it up, here's my new track. What I want to do is I double click on it. I want to name the track. It's important for you when you're doing your session to name all your tracks. This way you won't get lost. So what's that? What's that track? You go back here to this little thing here. Let's go back. I'll name this track. I'll call it like um, bass. And let's make a comment here. I might want to make the size of my setup. I got some having a bass guitar, and I'm using a uh, small amp. And the mic is about one inch from the woofer. Add the comments in there. So what am I put a mix shot? So look at that. It says the name, a new name. So I'm gonna say this is base. I'm gonna go back here and call it eBase. E dot base and press OK. And now that appears there. That information will appear there also as well. Now the reason why we have to name tracks is it's better when you go to this region list right here. So I'm gonna show you a minute ago. That you see there's names here for every track has its own name. Every region has its own name. And when you actually record in this track here, it'll record this name. So it makes you name every track. And it's good to put comments down. That way, you're aware of what's happening in case you might forget later on, or you send the session to someone else's house or some other producer gets it. Here's an idea of what's going on. So I have to comment constantly when I'm in a session. It's, it's important to leave notes so that you, uh, if you have to go back to something, you're aware of what went on before. And you can move tracks in sessions as well. You see, I move it right here, move it up here. I move it right there, right there. I move it right there. See the yellow line appear? That means it's going to go right there. So as you move a track, you will see a yellow line appear in the session. And it goes right there with that. I can move this track down again. And we can move tracks in the mix. In the mix. And it will appear here also in our track menu. See it right there? Now we can also, this will be a new track from there. We can duplicate a track. So let's have a track, I'm gonna duplicate this track. And what happens is we get a duplicating dialog box, duplicate tracks, number tracks, duplicates. I can do maybe one or two duplicates. Now the data that will be duplicated is right here. I can select which data I wanna keep, whether it's the group assign, the sends, the inserts, the automation, alternate playlist, or the active playlist. Insert after last of the track as well. So we can duplicate a track. Now, we can delete a track as well. And if I delete this track, it can't be undone. Be aware of that. So be careful if you're going to delete a track. If you're going to delete a track, make sure you're trying to get rid of it and that you're not going to have to want to go back to it. So I go back here. I can delete that track. I can create a click track somewhere in the session. And here's my click track. And then when I use a click track, I have a drummer playing, and I want the drummer to play a particular part, and he's the, only, he's the first part of the entire song. So look, I put the click track in, I let the guy play along the click track. Or I miss on a click track just for an overdub I want someone to do without hearing all the other instruments. So click tracks are very important when recording music. Now, let me go back here to the mix window, my mixer. And we'll see here in the mixer, let me set this up properly. 
that here in the mixer, we have the tracks right here, right? But your orders, if I click here in the mixer, you'll notice I click in the mixer, right click, we have all the same options here. I showed you before. We can hide, make a track active. We can make a track inactive. If I click right here, you can do the same. See that? Right where that little sign is right there. And this is a great way for you to actually save DSP power. You may not want that track in, do some overdubs. You will save power by making some tracks inactive. And if you want to bring them back, you can use them later on. Just in case you want to bring some other tracks in and see how they work. If they don't work, take them out, go back to your original track. But this will save on DSP power while you're using your Pro Tool system. Make it active again. So here I can click right here. And I get the ability within the track to do the same menu options I had, whether in the menu or in the track section. New, duplicate, delete, and it's all right there. So this gives you a much more efficient way to use Pro Tools, not just from the track menu here or from the track menu here on the left-hand side of our edit window.